Coming up on Signal by Sony, we'll see how the CyberShot WX9 stacks up against other point-and-shoot cameras. Plus, you want to take a camera apart? So do we. We're going to show you the inner guts of an Alpha A55. Signal by Sony starts right now. Hey guys, I'm Anthony. And I'm Melody. We've got a range of cameras to cover in this episode, starting with some point and shoots. So you might have noticed how point and shoots have a lot more features nowadays than they used to in the past. So even non-professionals can take some pretty nice pictures with these little pocket cameras. Uh, and that's something we talked about earlier in another one of our segments on food photography. Those were some very appetizing pictures. Yes, all on a little point and shoot. Would you believe it? So what we have here is the Cybershot WX9, which you've seen on Signal before. We were the first ones to show it to you at CES, and you saw it again in that food photography piece. Uh, and now we're going to take a look at how it compares to the Nikon Coolpix S6100 and the Canon PowerShot 300HS. Now, as of this taping, neither of these cameras has started shipping yet. Uh, we do have the Nikon S6000 and the Canon SD4000 here on set. These are earlier models, but keep in mind we're going to be talking about the new models just so you have the most up-to-date info. All right, so all three of the cameras have the basic similarities. They're around the $200 to $300 price range, although I'd like to point out that the Nikon and the Sony are um, kind of the cheaper of the three. Uh, the Nikon is $199.99 and the Sony WX9 is $219.99. Uh, now they all have about the same size LCD screen as well and a standard megapixel range. Um, and just in case you don't really know what that means, the higher the megapixel, the higher the resolution that you can shoot with the camera. So basically what that means is sharper images and larger files that you can enlarge as a full picture or just section in on so you can zoom in and blow up the picture without losing any quality. Yeah, they also have the same size image sensor. Uh, optical zoom capabilities are similar as well, ranging from five times to seven times, with Nikons being the biggest. If you're looking for something with a lot of zoom, you probably want to consider high zoom models like Sony's H series, where the zoom is up to a 30 times range. Yeah, and we talked about that in our last episode. Yes, we, we did. Really high zoom cameras. Uh, you're also going to want to check out the different shoot modes on each individual camera, just to check out what's right for you. So where do some of these cameras really start to differentiate? Well, Sony included a lot of features normally found on some of their more expensive models into the WX9. So for about $220, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Okay, so let's start with HD video. Nikon does 72030p. Canon can do either 72030p or 1080 24p. And the Sony can do up to 1920 by 1080 60i. So this is a clear advantage in terms of getting smoother video in either fast or slow motion. Now, when it comes to low light shots, think about taking those pictures where a flash might impact the mood. Sure. Um, and so you might want to keep a natural ambiance instead. All three cameras do really nicely in low light. So uh, the WX9 actually took it a step further and it has a handheld twilight or an anti-motion blur setting that you can use. So basically the camera will take up to six pictures in under a second and make one image out of the six. So that's pretty cool. Now, why does this matter? It's a really uh, nice extra help in providing preventing grainy or blurry photos in low light, which can be a big problem. Sure. It's also the only one of these three to have press and sweep panoramic capability. So in these other models, you have to take a photo, stop, line it up, take a photo, stop, line it up, and then you have to use software on your computer to stitch it together. The WX9 lets you sweep the camera horizontally or vertically in one swoop, and it takes the photos and stitches it together for you automatically in the camera. It's also the only one of these cameras with 3D capabilities, so it can take 3D still images and 3D sweep panorama images. And when it captures a 3D MPO file, it also saves a 2D JPEG file, just in case you want to view it in 2D. This is really awesome. I'm just kind of falling in love with the 3D features because I have a 3D TV at home. That's nice. And when you watch these big 3D panoramas like sweeping across your TV, it's really cool. Wow, it's a nice recap of the day. So just a final note, the other two cameras from Canon and Nikon do have their own set of features, some unique to their brands and some similar to the WX9. Just do a little research on sites like CNET, Imaging Resource, and DP Review to make sure you're getting what you want and for the right price point. And if you want to know more about the Cybershot WX9 in particular, it'll be available in April for about 220 bucks and of course you can get it in red silver or black all right so hopefully we helped you do a little bit of the legwork so you'll have an easier time making a decision if you're shopping for a point-and-shoot 
Now, we're gonna move on to the DSLR category, specifically Sony's translucent mirror camera line, the Alpha A55 and the A33. The two models launched last year to a huge reception. The A55 was named one of Time Magazine's 50 best inventions of 2010. Yeah, and the shake weight came out in 2010, so it was not a year without competition. And it was also named Camera of the Year by Popular Photography, and it won a gold award from DP Review. And there's been a lot of expert reviews on the A55, along with talk about its technology, but very few people actually get to see what goes on in there. So earlier today, someone from Sony's digital imaging team stopped by the studio to walk me through the inner mechanisms of a deconstructed A55. That's right, I tore an A55 apart with my bare hands. Are you impressed? You always get to break things. Joined now in the workshop by L. Dean from Sony's digital imaging team. Good to see you, man. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much for having me. Good to see you again. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we've got an A55 right in front of us, and I have been wondering about translucent mirror technology. And L. Dean told me that we can take an A55 apart and really show wait, how it works. Wait, so hold, let's... Hold, on, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. Before you get carried away, um, I took the liberty of taking one apart before I got you so that we didn't have to smash anything. Well played, LD, and you win this round. This is cool, all taken apart like this. So just take me through how the camera works from start to end here. Okay, so basically what happens with the camera is um, it essentially captures light. So why don't you grab that flashlight okay. and then pretend that that's light coming through the lens. Okay. All right, light is gonna come through the front. It goes through um, the mirror box over here. Okay. Um, this is a mounting bracket and it hits a sensor at the back there. Now what happens with the sensor mm -hmm. is that that captures the image or sees what you're seeing through the uh, lens of the camera. That signal is then changed from an analog signal to a digital signal, Okay. which is then, uh, which is through the processor, and we have a processor here which I'll show you in a second, uh, it gets processed and saved to a memory card. Okay. And that's essentially the, the process of light coming through the camera, hitting the sensor, getting processed, and then you get a final image at the end of the day. Cool. So the first thing that really changes or the biggest change, I guess, about the A55 is here, right? It's the mirror box. Exactly. So what is the difference between this mirror box and a traditional one? All right, so I have one here as well. Okay. And as you can see, you can see right through this mirror box. So why mm -hmm. don't we grab that flashlight? Okay. And again, shine your light on it. And then you can see that it goes right through. It hits my hand at the back. Yeah. So why don't you hold that for a second? Okay. All right. Now, in typical scenario, what happens is that light goes through and hits the mirror. Mm -hmm. uh, it would then bounce up through the optical viewfinder in a traditional camera. Okay, and that's what sends it just to my eye. And that's what, you know, yeah. it basically it's like a, a, a periscope essentially. Yeah. You know, you, light goes in, goes up, and gets reflected back to your eye. Cool. And some of the light gets reflected to what we call the phase detection autofocus system. Okay. All right. And with the translucent mirror technology camera, light passes right through the translucent mirror, mm -hmm. but some light is also reflected back to the phase detection autofocus system, which makes the camera fire really fast. Okay. Okay. So, um, advantages is the camera is always focusing, mm -hmm. light is always passing it through, and it's always hitting the sensor at the back, and uh, essentially you can follow focus while you're shooting. Cool. Whereas a traditional camera, the minute the mirror lifts up, you can't see through it, and the focus is basically disabled for that split second. So this is the front half of the camera, and as mm -hmm. you can see, this is the, the, the body molding. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the flash system, which is up at the top here, and you can see how that flash system actually works. That's cool. Grab that uh, mirror box again. Okay. So what happens is that this typically will sit right here in front of the camera. Okay. When light goes through, it hits uh, this little sensor, and this little sensor sits up here just, just below the flash. And that's really where your focus sensor is. Okay. All right, now this camera, as we said before, um, you know, doesn't use the traditional optical viewfinder, but this actually uses an electronic viewfinder. So you can have a look, that's the little electronic viewfinder. Mm -hmm. And what's the, what's the advantage of using an electronic viewfinder as opposed to a, an optical viewfinder? So there's a lot of advantages. The beauty about using an LCD screen or an electronic viewfinder in an SLR is that the mirror lifts up in a traditional camera. Mm -hmm. You can't see through the viewfinder anymore because the mirror is now blocking your view. Right. To allow light to go through and hit the sensor. With the electronic viewfinder, um, and the translucent mirror, light mm -hmm. goes through all the time. So essentially, you're always seeing your preview. You can always see what you're shooting because yeah. that doesn't actually turn off. You know, you're always seeing what you, what's coming through the lens. 
Um, the other thing is that you can layer information over it. So for instance, if I go in and I can change my settings, I can put a histogram on it, or what my shooting settings are, uh, and that'll all appear in the uh, electronic viewfinder. In addition to that, I can have different information on the viewfinder than I have on the LCD screen. So since we moved on to the sensor, mm -hmm. as you can see, this has a uh, full APS-C size sensor. So like most traditional SLRs, um, in other words, your picture quality is going to be the same as most SLRs. Um, we also have the uh, image stabilization built into the sensor. When you have stabilization built into the actual sensor, you know, you can put a fisheye, a wide angle, or even, you know, expensive telephoto lens on here and it'll be stabilized, which is a real great Very advantage. Cool. So, you know, we spoke about, um, you know, light coming through, mm -hmm. uh, hitting the sensor. We spoke a little bit about, you know, the phase detection autofocus sensor, but I want to go right. into a little bit more detail about the phase detection sensor. Okay. This is really what makes a DSLR a DSLR. This allows the DSLR to use um, a dedicated optical sensor to focus the camera on different focus points. And that's what makes a DSLR focus extremely fast and very accurate. Right? Okay. Um, when you use a camcorder, for instance, most camcorders use what they call contrast detect, and that uses the main sensor which focuses back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Right, we've all seen that, that's sort of wobbly, it's trying to find what's right. going on and you can't really see it. Correct, and traditional SLRs, because they don't, you know, because when the mirror lifts up and it deactivates your phase detection, mm -hmm. has to use the main sensor for focus. Okay. So in this particular camera, uh, light is still reflected to the phase detection, it still focuses as fast and accurate as you would expect with an SLR, but it captures the image on the main sensor, so without any compromise, essentially. So moving on to the other parts, this is the circuit board. Okay. Um, this is kind of the, the guts and the brains of the camera. And uh, as you can see, it's made up of different components. Mm -hmm. um, most of it, I can't tell you what it is, except I can <laughs> tell you that it has the, the, the Beyond's image processors, which are extremely fast. Right? So what's special about the, uh, the Beyond's processor in here? Well, think about doing your own processing, or mm -hmm. also think about doing processing in a professional lab. You can tweak and change things uh, during the processing, mm -hmm. depending on what you want, and depending on what type of paper or what type of look that you want to go with. Now, the processor does the same thing, right? Okay. The processor takes that image, and it takes all the information that you've given it. Now you've, you've basically given it information about um, how you want to set the white balance. Um, traditionally in film you would have uh, ASA, is the speed of the film, and that right. would be how sensitive the film is. And the, the film sensitivity has got to do with um, how much light it's sensitive to at a particular time. Now you can set the sensitivity of the processor and it basically reacts the same way as film speed. You know? Okay. 200 ASA is kind of like 200 ISO. Really what we've done is we've taken our um, a combination of improved uh, sensors that mm -hmm. can now go up to over 16,000 ISO. Wow. And the processor also does some noise reduction when it actually processes that image. And it'll recognize different types of chroma noise or you know, particles in, in, in your image that mm -hmm. what people typically see as grain. And it reduces that grain. The other cool things, um, being able to take those images at very high speeds and with that processing power, you know, we're able to build in sweet panorama mm -hmm. into this camera. Sure. Take up multiple images as you sweep across a frame. We can build in things like uh, anti-motion blur or handle twilight, which will take up to six images and then compress them into one in a split second. Yeah. Um, and also be able to, you know, process that very fast within the camera. So that would, you know, additionally it reduces noise or blur. The processor is doing a lot, man. The processor is doing a lot. So when you ask me, what does a processor do? Uh, it's got a very busy job. It does a lot of things. It's a, it's a pretty powerful processor, and you know, works in conjunction with the with the sensor. So the sensor does some um, analog to digital conversion before mm -hmm. it hits the processor, and then the processor takes that digital information and and does something with it. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, man. I, I feel like I have a much better grasp of what's going on in this translucent mirror technology now. All all right, we've now come to a very crucial part of the show. It is time to announce a product giveaway. Anthony, what do we have in store for viewers? Uh, we unfortunately do not have anything. Anthony, no, come on. No, we do not have anything. We talked about this. No, you we can, didn't. You can do it. You can do it. Fine. Here, here it is. One of you can have my DC Universe Online Collector's Edition. That's right, it's mine. It's not. Okay, so the two exclusive in-game weapons are mine. The limited edition Batman statue is mine, okay? And you guys can have my DCUO Legends issue zero, and you can have my art of DC Universe Online. You know what, I changed my mind because they can't have it, it belongs to me. Anthony, come back. Come on, wouldn't it be nice to give the viewers the nice game? The viewers want me to be happy. No, they don't. 
Well, clearly you can see the collector's edition means a lot to him. So I'm gonna make it a little more challenging for you to earn it. Tell us by sending a note on Twitter at Signal by Sony, in your own words, why you think you deserve the DCU online collector's edition. And uh, I hope you make it a good one or else we'll have to give it to Anthony and none of us want that. Everybody wants it. Nobody wants it. You'll find the rules and deadlines at the website listed on the screen. Anthony, seriously, we have to finish the show. And coming back, he's not coming back. I swear if you open up the packaging, as always, you can go to sony.com slash signal to check out links to all the products you saw on this episode, or you can find us at youtube.com slash signal, where you can leave us a comment. For now, this is Just Melody signing off on Signal by Sony. I'm gonna go find Anthony and get that game for him. You'll never find me because I trained under Batman and I'm a ninja, I'm invisible. Are.